Okay, for this video, I've got a series of past paper questions relating to databases. Um, you'll find these on paper two, O level, um, IGCSE, and they're usually worth, look at this one, one, two, three, four, this one's worth eight. But they're usually worth anywhere between eight, six, six and eight marks. So if you bear that in mind, the paper's out of 75, you're looking at anywhere between sort of, um, I don't know, 9 and 11% of the actual paper itself. And they're so easy, so easy to get full marks on a database question. Okay, so we'll start with the first one. So we've got our database. So a storage unit, rental company wants to set up a new database table for the storage units that can be rented. The table will be called storage units and needs to store these details. The size in meters of the storage unit, size in square meters, the position, whether it's first, second, or third floor, okay, so they must be stacked on top of each other. Hoist, um, whether there is a hoist available for the transfer of items. Um, price month, the price in dollars per month's rental. And a storage ID, the code to identify each storage unit, for example, S123. So looking at that, we need to determine, give the name of the field that would be used for the primary key. Well. Primary key is usually a, it's going to be a field that's unique. So the only field really that's going to be unique here, because storage units are generally something that I would sort of assume looks like this. Yeah, with a, a sort of a shutter or a door on the front. Yeah, depending where it is, the door to get in. So it was going to be the storage ID. Okay. Why is it going to be that? Because we can set this up so it is a unique, a unique identifier. Okay, it can have a unique identity to it, a unique number S one two three. So, complete the table to identify the most appropriate data type for these fields in the table storage units. Okay, size in meters. Size in meters is going to be a number. So, what, what do we know about numbers? It's going to be either an integer. Or real, okay, would generally be what we use for that. Now, position, let's go back down. Position is first, second, or third floor. So we could have it as being first, second, or third. We could have it as one, two, three. We could have it one, st, two, and d. So it could be anything really, anything at all. So position, I'm going to put again integer. I'm not going to use real. But what I can do is a char if it's just ABC one two three, and it could could even be a text or an alphanumeric. So text, yeah, um, alpha. Okay, hoist is generally if I go back, hoist whether the hoist is available for transferring the item. I think what they're trying to get there is it's going to be a boolean. Either yes or no, is there a hoist, is there not a hoist, okay? But again, it could be words, we could use text for alphanumeric, but I'm thinking what they're trying to get out there is a boolean. And then finally, storage ID. Well, I would generally, storage ID, looking at S123, I would say that is going to be an alphanumeric, yeah? But I suppose we could still store that value as a, as a text. But we could just store that in text. But yeah, I'm going to stick with alphanumeric for that one. Okay, complete this structured query language SQL statement to display only the storage code, price, and size. So three things. Yeah, the storage code, the price, and the size in square meters. Okay, of all the storage units where there's a hoist available. So it's quite daunting, we've got hoist, yeah, we've got all the storage units, square meters. Okay, so what we're gonna select first of all, storage code, price, and size. So storage code is select storage ID, 
uh, price, price month. Yeah, so storage ID, price month, and size, size meters. Okay, from, so what was the name of the table? The table was called storage units. Okay. Okay, where, where there is a hoist available. Now, Boolean is either true or false, yes or no. So, where there is a choice available, where hoist equals, and I will put true. Okay, now to finish it off, we normally put a um, semicolon. Okay, and if, but in fact, it's given us one there, look, so we don't really need to worry about that. Let's give us a little semicolon there. So hoist equals true. So that's it. That's got us four, five, six, eight marks. Okay. Okay, next question. A database table called soft drinks, okay, stores details of the soft drinks sold by a small shop. So here we go. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items in the field. And then we've got examples of the data that will be stored in those particular fields. Cola, Cambridge beverages, beverages is our supplier. Um, container is a can, size C1, I'm assuming that's in centiliters, okay, or CL, centiliters. Number in stock, 30, um, reorder level 15, reordered, yes. So, here we go. State whether any of the given fields would be suitable as a primary key and give a reason for your answer. If you put yes or no, I'd generally say no. Yeah. No. And I'm going to refer back to this. No. None of the fields are unique. Stick in the word unique. Okay. So what's next? Complete the structured query language. SQL statement to return the number of cans the shop has in stock. Okay, five marks, so five gaps, five marks. The easiest mark to get is the from, because the from is the name of the table, okay? So from soft drinks. So before I even do anything else, from soft drinks. So complete to return the number of cans. So what I've got to do with this for numbering that somebody be using the number in stock. So select, what is that gap for there? Well, if we're gonna return the number of cans in the shop, I'm gonna go select sum, yeah, from number in stock. Okay, so select sum, number in stock. From soft drinks, where, yeah, it says number of cans. Remember, we could have drinks in bottles. So number of cans where, yeah, container, yeah, equals can. So let's go back to that. Select the sum of the number in stock, yeah. Um, from soft drinks, the table, where container equals can. Okay. Five, six marks for that. Okay. About nine percent of the pass of the paper. Okay, we'll do another one. A music streaming service has a new database table called Songs to store details of songs available for streaming. The table contains fields: song number, looks like a unique identifier, AG one two three. Yeah, title, the title of the song, the author, the person who wrote the song, the singer, the person who's singing the song, the genre, the type of music, for example, rock. Minutes, the length of the song in minutes, for example, there we go, a real number, 3.75, and recorded, the date, date field, yeah, the date the song was recorded. Identify the field that would be the most appropriate for a primary key. Well, it's obviously that one, isn't it? That's unique, so I'm gonna put in here, song, I'm gonna put in here, song number, okay? Put a little hook to it, okay? Now then, for two marks, complete the table to identify the most appropriate data type for the fields in song. So song number, okay? It's a mixture, AG123. 
So for this, you could you could use text. I'm going to put that in. Could use text. But generally speaking, I would use because it's a mixture of um, letters and numbers. I would use alpha numeric. Okay. The title of the song. I'm just going to do text. Okay. But some songs have numbers in them. So again, alpha numeric. Okay. When was it recorded? This is going to be um, the date, date field. Date, what we generally call date, date, slash, time. And the number of minutes, because it's a 3.75, I would do that as a real number, because it's a decimal number. So here we go. Explain the purpose of the structured query language, SQL statements, sum, yeah, we learned that last time, sum the number of minutes, from songs where genre equals rock, count the titles from songs where the genre equals rock. Explain the purpose of the structured query language. Basically, what, we'll, what else are we going to be doing is calculating the total number of minutes of music. Okay, so calculate total number of minutes. Okay, and then we're going to count total number of songs that are available that are available for the genre rock. Okay, so we're going to calculate the total number of minutes by doing a sum. We're going to count the total number of songs, yeah, that are available for the genre rock. Okay, three, four, five, six for that one. Again, another nine percent, yeah, of your mark. Now we've got a big one here, database table, and then there's all sorts of things going on. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Okay, yeah. So we've got a big table. Yeah, and then we've got part A, which is two marks, part B, another two marks, and part um, C, and four marks. We have four spaces for our SQL query. Well, let's start with this one. Don't be worried about the size of it, it's just data. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six fields. So, a database table called TV Range shows the main features and price of a range of TVs. Okay, now, it looks like most of them here are Boolean. We've got a numeric value. We've also got price value, which could argue is a real number because it's got decimal places. And then we've got this, which is a mixture of letters and numbers, like an alphanumeric field. So, which of these is going to be unique? Well, you can see that some of the prices are the same. Yeah. See some of the TV screen sizes are the same. Yes, as a nose are obviously going to be the same, either one or the other. So it's got to be TV code. So this is probably the easiest question. Give the name of the field that is most suitable for a primary key. Obviously, it's going to be TV code. Okay. And a unique identifier. Easiest two marks you can get. Okay. And then we'll look going across. Move that over there a little bit. Okay, the data types used are going to be text, character, boolean, integer, real, date, and time. Complete the table to show the most appropriate data type for each field. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't be easier to put it this, it's giving you everything. So let's have a little look. TV code. Yeah, what type of, um, based on what we've got here, what type of data is that going to be? They've not included. They've not included alphanumeric, so it's got to be text. Okay. The screen size down here is going to be um, an integer. Yeah, whereas the price is going to be here yeah, a real. Okay, and then finally, smart TV. Yeah, it's yes or no, so that's going to be Boolean. Okay, hope you can read my writing. And then finally, for four marks, I've got one, two, three, four missing words. Complete the structured query language SQL query 
to return the, t the television TV code, yeah, the size of the screen and the price of all the smart TVs in the database table, okay? And it's actually given us the actual database table. So we need to put something in there. So select TV code, comma, screen size, and price. So let's put in there, nice and easy, screen size, okay, and price. Yeah. From, missing word here, from TV range, where smart TVs equals, where smart TV equals true. But we're using in here, yes and no fields rather than true or false. So basically, we're gonna pull the word yes. Okay, where smart TV equals yes. Okay, we've got our little semicolon on the end, we don't need to worry about adding that. I think this is probably the easiest one. This is like eight marks, okay, eight marks. After 75, you're talking about 11% of the overall paper. Yeah, for these, this very, very easy database question. Just make sure you know select from and where. It's always select from and where in terms of SQL. But that's it. And make sure you're aware of your data types. But as you've, as you've seen, unless it gives you them here, you can put in most things. You can put in lots of different um, suggestions. Okay. So that is it for databases. That is it for database questions in O level and IGCSE papers. I will do another one on IB database questions, but they're very, very similar. Okay, thank you very much indeed. Bye for now. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.